Bethy Combs here with Bethy Combs Yoga and Canyon Community Yoga. Welcome to our Tuesday morning yoga session. Thank you so much for joining live or watching the replay. Um, I think we've got our video finally set up and working. I might move my mat back just a skosh to help with that. And then um, I did pull a card this morning. I uh, hadn't done that for a little while. I just find it helps me stay focused on the practice and it gives me something to focus on so I'm not thinking about um, my day ahead. I can kind of tune into my body a little bit more when I kind of have a word to think of. So this morning's word is prana, subtle essence of vital life force and breath, flexible and creative. And um, I'll just show you the card regular upright position and then I actually pulled it in reverse and with most tarot decks I don't necessarily or oracle decks I don't necessarily read the reverse but this guidebook actually talks about the reverse so I think it helps me understand it a little bit better um, so it says look at your breath and you are looking into your life is your breathing shallow quick and contained rather than then deep, slow, and expansive. This is what is blocking prana from moving throughout your body. Your breath is a signal of how you are feeling, and when you breathe quick and shallow breaths, you are signaling to your body that you are in danger. Simply by breathing more deeply into the belly, you are calming down your nervous system and allowing more positive thoughts to come through. Transform your breath, and you will transform your life. So I find that my breath is one of the best ways for me to tune into my body because my brain just like takes off um, whenever it feels threatened. And so tuning into my body, one of the first ways that I can do that is to just notice my breathing. And when I notice that it's shallow, then I can take steps to start breathing in a more deep manner, maybe even close my eyes, maybe even use the relax setting on my Fitbit app uh, watch. If you, do, if you have a Fitbit, you should definitely check that out. They have two and five minute sessions you can do where you're just breathing nice and big and nice and slow. And it really, I like to do it just before I have a presentation, just before um, even just switching gears or starting work for the day or ending work for the day. Um, I feel like it really helps me with transitions and being present wherever I happen to be at the time. So um, I definitely recommend that. And then while we're doing our practice today, tune into your body. And you might notice if we're in a more challenging pose that you find yourself holding your breath. And so hopefully um, by opening up and kind of lengthening that breath, you also take some of the tension out of that pose. Um, so those are just a few options or ideas for you to try for yourself today. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our mats and our seated cross-legged pose. And move this back a little bit more. <coughs> and I'm going to sit up on my bolster. I'm kind of getting into my luteal well, I'm deep in my luteal phase, which is the third phase of the menstrual cycle, third or fourth phase, depending on where you're starting from. Um, so feeling a little bit more tension in my joints. My hips are even more tight than they normally are. So you might also find that your hips are pretty tight. And so I definitely recommend grabbing a cushion a bolster, even folding up a blanket and sitting up on that. The goal is to get your knees below your hips. So just whatever you can do to make that happen. Feel free to close your eyes here as we begin to tune into our breath. We're gonna take three rounds of breath where we inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. We're gonna release any tension from the day before or last night, maybe you didn't sleep very well. Um, so just releasing any tension our bodies might be holding on to right now, releasing any energy that we no longer need. So we'll inhale and exhale. 
Feel free to sigh, make as much noise as you need to to release that energy. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time, inhale. And exhale. You can close the lips, begin inhaling and exhaling through the nose, unless you're feeling particularly anxious this morning, and then I recommend that you do actually continue exhaling out the mouth. This actually calms our vagus nerve. So we're really rooting into our sits bones, lengthening up the spine and out the crown of the head. Our chins, our jaw are parallel with the earth. Our jaw is soft. Our tongue is just sitting in our mouth. It's not pressing to the roof of the mouth. Just allow it to kind of sink into your mouth. And maybe you can even begin your Ujjayi breath, which might sound like ocean waves crashing or Darth Vader breath, as I like to call it. Then we'll blink our eyes open and we'll begin to add some movement. So we're gonna take our right hand down next to our right hip. We'll bring the left arm up alongside the left ear and then we'll fold over to the right any amount. You'll see I have had to move my hand down to the floor so that I'm not crunching into my wrist. Maybe you can gaze up under the left arm if your neck allows it. Breathing into that left side body all the way down to the left hip. We'll inhale, we'll come back to center <clears throat> and then we'll switch sides. So the left hand plants next to the left hip, the right arm comes up alongside the right ear. We'll fold over to the left, gazing up under the right arm. And we'll inhale, come back to center, and we'll fold over our bent legs. Rocking from side to side, lengthening out that low back. We'll come back to center, we'll change the cross of the legs. We'll set up for our twist here, so we'll sit up nice and tall, take the left hand to the right knee. As you inhale, sit a little bit taller. As you exhale, rotate a little bit more. Make sure you're rotating from your abdominals and not just yanking your body over with your left hand. Right hand is next to the right hip, or you can make a fist. And once you've gone as far as you can, go ahead and gaze over that right shoulder. We'll inhale, we'll come back to center and we'll switch directions. So right hand goes to the left knee. We'll inhale, sit up nice and tall. We'll exhale, rotate over to the left. So again, inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, rotate to the left. Gaze over that left shoulder. Inhale, we'll come back to center, and we'll fold over our bent legs one more time. And we'll inhale, we'll come back up, and then we'll go ahead and come onto our hands and knees. So we'll move our cushion out of the way. <coughs> Our knees are lined up underneath our wrists, sorry. <laughs> 
knees are lined up under the hips and our hands or our wrists are lined up underneath our shoulders. We're going to set up for cat cow here. Tops of the feet are pressing into the mat. We're going to inhale and lift our forehead and tailbone towards the ceiling. Exhale, pull the belly button back towards the spine. Inhale to come up, really pressing up out of those wrists. Exhale to pull back. Inhale up. Exhale back. And then take two more following your own breath at your own pace. And then we'll come back to center and we'll do a little abdominal warm up here. So we'll bring the right fingertips out in front of us. The left toes come back behind us. We're going to inhale and lift the right arm up alongside the right ear. If you'd like, you can lift the left foot off the, off the mat an inch or two or even all the way up to hip height. And we'll exhale, lower everything down, and we'll switch sides. So the left fingertips come out in front, right toes back behind us. We'll inhale, lift up that left arm next to the ear, pressing up from the right wrist. Maybe bring the right foot a couple inches or all the way up to hip height up off the mat. And we'll exhale, we'll lower everything down. And then we'll do just a few hip circles to get the body warmed up, dropping the butt towards our seat, or sorry, towards our heels. Then we'll switch directions. And just uh, noticing your breath. Are you holding tension? Does this... Uh, hip area of your body make you uncomfortable. See if you can breathe into that. Sending love, sending compassion to the parts of our body that maybe we don't like for whatever reason. Maybe we just don't have a relationship with. And then go ahead and bring the big toes to touch, widen the knees, the width of the mat, and then lower the forehead down onto the mat or near the mat for child's pose. Then we'll come back up and we're going to do a little back stretch, a little shoulder stretch next. So um, I'll just sit up real quick and mention. So chakra four is located in our chest area. So it's above our abdominals, which is where chakra three is. So it's where the heart lives, but it's also where the lungs live. Sometimes we focus a lot on the front body, um, but it also includes the back body. So the shoulder blades and in between the shoulder blades. So I'm going to try to focus on both sides of the body today. So we're going to start on our hands and knees. And then we're going to take the right hand. We're going to flip it so the palm is facing up towards our chest. And then we're going to slide it underneath the left arm. And the left hand is pressing so that we have a 90 degree angle with our left elbow. And we're resting the side of the right, the right side of the head on the mat. The right shoulder is resting on the mat. Now, if you are not able to get your shoulder all the way down, you can just hold yourself up or you can grab a block or a pillow and place it under that shoulder. Just to support you a little bit more, you'll still get a great stretch in that back body. 
and you don't have to crank yourself so far down. We'll inhale, we'll come back up, and then we'll switch sides. So we're gonna plant the right hand down. We're gonna take the left hand and flip it up towards the ceiling, and then we're gonna slide it underneath the left arm. Again, making sure our wrist is lined up under our elbow. We're making a 90 degree angle with our right arm. And again, if your shoulder cannot get all the way to the floor, you can always place a block underneath your left shoulder. Then we'll inhale, we'll come back up. And then we'll take a little low lunge here. So we're gonna bring the left foot in between the hands. If you've got blocks, you can place them on either side of the foot here. Or you can just place your hands right on the mat. If you're feeling pretty steady, you can also bring the hands up to the bent knee. And you can also bring your arms up alongside your ears. So just hold yourself wherever you notice you still have balance. Slide the shoulder blades down the back if you've got your arms next to your ears, squeezing the upper arms in towards the ears. Then we'll exhale, we'll fold forward, bring that left foot back, bring the right foot forward. So again, just checking in, making sure that your left ankle is tracking right underneath, sorry, your right ankle is tracking underneath your right knee. So move the foot forward or back to make that happen. Again, you can bring your hands up to your bent knee. Lifting that chest, lifting the breastbone up towards the sky. Maybe bring the arms up alongside the ears. And we'll plant the hands, move the blocks out of the way. You can move that foot back behind you. And then we're gonna go ahead and come into a downward facing dog. So we're gonna walk the hands a palm's distance in front of where they were underneath our shoulders. And we're gonna flip the toes and then pull the hips up and back towards the ceiling. Feel free to pedal the feet out here. And we're gonna walk the feet up in between the hands at the top of the mat. We'll inhale, lift the chest forward. Exhale, fold forward, bend the knees here. As we inhale, sweep the arms up and around and exhale the hands to heart center. <coughs> so we'll just do a couple sun salutations this morning just to get the body warmed up a little bit more. I know I'm feeling a little chilly this morning. It's only 15 out. Um, I've heard it was single digits earlier this week, so <laughs> definitely January in a lot of parts of the country right now. So we're going to start with our arms down by our sides. We're going to inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back, lower the knees, lower the chest all the way down to the mat. Pressing all 10 toes into the mat, the tops of the feet into the mat, pulling the tailbone towards the heels. We're gonna inhale and lift our chest into Cobra.
And then we're going to exhale, push ourselves back up to tabletop, and then pull the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Pedal the feet out here if you need. Then we'll step the feet up in between the hands at the top of the mat. We'll inhale, come halfway up. We'll exhale and fold forward. We'll bend the knees. We'll inhale, lift the arms up and around. Exhale the hands to heart center. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back, lower the knees or lower through a push-up all the way down to the mat. We'll inhale and we'll lift up to cobra, or you can lift the legs up for upward facing dog. And then pull the hips up and back for downward facing dog. On an exhale. Then we'll step the feet up in between the hands at the top of the mat. We'll inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Bend the knees as you inhale and sweep the arms up and around. And exhale the hands to heart center. So let's close our eyes here in our mountain pose. Feeling rooted and connected with the earth. Noticing our breath, noticing our heart. Noticing the backside of our body in between our shoulder blades. And then we're going to take um, a leg stretch here. We're going to step to the side of our mats or st step to the middle of our mats. Then we're gonna step the feet three to four feet apart. We wanna make sure the weight is even on all four corners of our feet. We're gonna place the hands on the hips. We're gonna engage the quads, lifting them up away from the kneecaps and lift the heart towards the ceiling. Inhale, and then we're gonna exhale and fold forward, placing the hands either on some blocks or on the floor, keeping the chest parallel with the floor. So the head is reaching out towards the wall. Breathing here. Then we'll place the hands back on the hips and we're gonna use the strength in our legs to bring our torsos back up to standing. Feel free to step the feet together if you need a little break, shake the legs out. <coughs> <coughs> then we'll step the feet apart one more time, placing the hands on the hips, engaging the quads up off the kneecaps, lifting the heart towards the ceiling and then folding forward. This time we're gonna allow our head to lengthen towards the floor. Breathing here, breathing into our backside, our back bodies. Then we'll place our hands on our hips. We'll bring our torsos back up to standing. We'll step the feet together, give the legs a little shake. And then we're gonna do a couple more poses on the mats, strengthening and then lengthening our low back area. So we're gonna come down onto all fours 
And then we're going to actually lower all the way down to the mat to set up for locust pose. So we're going to bring the big toes to touch. Tops of the feet are on the mat. We've got our hands underneath our shoulders. And we're just going to start out kind of with a mini cobra. So we'll pull the tailbone towards the heels. We'll inhale and lift the chest up. Hands are still on the mat. We'll exhale, lower the right cheek down onto the mat. Go ahead and rock your hips from side to side. Just kind of loosening any tension you might have in your low back right now. Then we're going to bring the arms out in front of us. The palms face each other. We're going to pull the tailbone towards the heels. And this time we're going to lift the feet and the hands and the arms up off the mat. So we're pointing our toes away from our tailbone. We're reaching our fingertips out of our head, opposite directions. Remember to breathe here. And then we'll exhale, lower down, left cheek on the mat this time. And we'll reach the arms out in front of us one more time. Our toes are pressing in toward one another. Big toes are touching. Pull the tailbone towards the heels. Inhale and then lift the toes and the arms and the head and the chest up off the mat as high as you can go. Remember to breathe here. Then we'll exhale, lower everything back down to the mat. Shake your hips from side to side. Then we're going to press ourselves up into a child's pose to really lengthen that low back. So the big toes are touching. Widen the knees. You can place a block under your forehead if you find that helpful. I notice a big difference for me when my hips are tight. If I have a block under my head, it just makes this pose a little bit juicier for me. Reaching that tailbone toward the heels. It doesn't have to touch your heels. It just has to go in that direction. Your butt does not have to be touching your feet right now. And we'll come back up to our tabletop, and then we're going to actually flip around for our bridge pose. Might see if I can turn my mat just so that you can see me a little bit better for this one. There we go. So if you've got a block, go ahead and grab it. I find that it helps me engage my legs a lot better if I've got one. So I'll put it over here for right now. So we're going to lay down on our backs to set up for bridge pose. We want to make sure our heels are underneath our knees. And they're about hip distance apart. I'm going to take the block and place it in between my thighs. On the short edge of the mat. I find when I do it the long way, it's just too much. Um, and I get some discomfort as I get closer up to my groin area. So I find the short edge works the best for me. So kind of play around with different angles and see what works best for you. I've got the hands extended. Palms are flat, pressing into the mat. 
So we're just going to do some dynamic warm up and then we'll hold it, uh, but I'll guide you through that. So we're going to inhale and lift the hips up off the mat towards the ceiling. And then exhale, lower the hips back down. So we'll do that two more times. Inhale to come up. Be sure to notice that you're pressing into your heels. Exhale to come down. Inhale up. And you can check in with that by lifting your toes up off the mat and exhale to come down. So we'll do two or three rounds where we're gonna hold it now. So we're gonna inhale, we're gonna lift the hips up, pressing into the heels so you can lift the toes up off the mat to check in with that. Make sure you're not clenching your butt. Make sure you're squeezing your thighs together. We'll exhale, lower down. We'll do that two more times. So we're gonna inhale and lift the hips up. Pressing into our arms, pressing the thighs together, pressing into our heels, reaching the heart towards the ceiling. Exhale, lower down. One last time. Take a breath here, just laying here real quick. And then inhale, press up one last time. Really engaging, pressing the arms into the mat squeezing the inner thighs toward one another, lifting our toes up off the mat to engage in the heels. Remembering to breathe. We'll exhale, lower everything down. Now you can take the block out from in between your thighs. Bring your knees into your chest and rock from side to side. And you can go ahead and lengthen your legs out for your Shavasana. So you've got a couple options. If your low back is tight and you happen to have a bolster, you can place it underneath your knees. Just like that. Otherwise, if you don't have a bolster, you can actually place the feet to the outer edge of the mat, leaning the knees in toward one another. So you've got a couple different options. And just pretend my feet are on the floor and not on a bolster. So just whatever you need, maybe you need to add a layer back on to get a little bit more comfortable. Releasing the hands out to the sides, or if you want a little bit more of a chest stretch, you can actually bring the arms up to cactus arms or goalpost arms. Just kind of play around with different poses and see what's gonna allow you to sink into your mat the most. The goal is to be as comfortable as possible so that you can completely release your body and your mind, allowing your practice to integrate throughout your body. One, one place that I like to focus my breath when I'm meditating or when I'm in Shavasana, just to keep my mind um, focused on something, is actually just honing in on my breastbone and the sensation of the rise and fall of my chest while I'm breathing. So I just share that as you might find it to be helpful for you as well.
You can begin to lengthen your inhales and your exhales. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Roll over to your right side. Take a couple breaths here and then push yourself up to a comfortable seated position. All right, well, I hope that you found this practice nourishing. I hope you've been able to tune into your heart center, your breathing. Breath is life. I hope that you continue to tune into your breathing throughout the day and the rest of the week. Just checking in with yourself regularly, even if it means putting a reminder on your calendar just to get started with that practice. Um, do whatever you need to to make that a regular a regular thing. You can bring your hands together at heart center. The compassion, the love, and the light in me honors the compassion, the love, and the light in you. Thank you for practicing with me this morning. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.